Hi, uh, my name is Jonathan. Um, I'm going to be discussing a project I did on predicting Bitcoin's next daily close price. So the big issues, problems that I was contemplating for this project initially were, um, can I actually predict this price and forecast it within a re reasonable degree of accuracy? Um, what variables are important in, in doing this? And um, are there any financial indicators that could aid or boost uh, just predicting the price so I can make uh, well-educated trading decisions. So some basic overview um, of the exploratory data analysis I conducted. Um, I used Bitcoin along with uh, eight other altcoins um, with a total number of rows of over 13,000. Um, and this was on a granularity level of, of uh, day by day data. So keep that in mind. Um, and then the columns I used in my modeling, my initial modeling was uh, date, close, and then volume. And volume was mainly for the financial indicators. Um, all this, all this data was uh, retrieved from Yahoo Finance. And the final number of rows I used in modeling was 346 rows. Though at the later stages of the project, I ended up using all of Bitcoin's uh, closed price data to uh, come up with the best model. Uh, yeah, so, and then uh, on a final note for this slide, um, the few existing null values that uh, po were populated in the data sets uh, did not play a part in the modeling. So that was definitely plus, I didn't have to deal with that. So uh, some basic overview of how Bitcoin has trended over time. Um, as you can see here, um, near the end of 2018, it crashed, um, but then it had a recovery uh, since March, 2020, and it's been extremely bullish since then. Um, so far, the market has not been wanting to surpass the $40,000 mark. Um, so it's quite possible another plunge could occur um, and that bubble could burst. Um, just uh, just some basic statistics about uh, Bitcoin over this time frame. Uh, standard deviations over five thousand um, dollars, with a max over forty thousand, and then a min of one hundred seventy eight. So my initial model was going to be a multiple linear aggressive time series model. Um, so I investigated the correlation between Bitcoin and other altcoins, and those other altcoins were chosen because they had a the highest market cap uh, compared to the other less lesser known altcoins. Um, a, a lot of the predictions made on Bitcoin or even other coins are based on the level of correlation with the other coins. The, the market tends to move uh, synonymously. So um, from highest to lowest correlation, uh, well, significant correlation, uh, Ethereum, Litecoin, Binance, Bitcoin Cash, and Ripple had a uh, reasonable correlation with uh, Bitcoin. So I ended up investigating that to see how it would fit into the first model I made. But before that, I made a baseline model, which was just a simple three-day moving average model, uh, averaging the three previous days Bitcoin price um, to predict the next day's price. Um, and this had an RMSE of 764 approximately. And this is going to serve as a baseline RMSE. Um, I want to lower that RMSE over uh, subsequent models. And this will be my metric, of course, of comparing models. So for my multiple linear regressive time series model, um, these were the variables that played a part in the, in the model. They were statistically significant. Um, relative time, and then these monthly dummy variables, and then Litecoin, Ripple, and Ethereum. And a time lag was introduced because um, in order to predict the next day's price, you need to have information from the previous day. So that was introduced into the model. Um, and the RMSC did improve by lowering. Um, so this is a plot of the model against the actual price of Bitcoin. And I investigated other types of time series modeling methods to improve the RMSE even further. But before that, um, 
here's just a quick plot of the residuals versus the fitted values. Um, just just as proof that the assumptions of linear regression are not violated. Um, there's a couple outliers, but for the most part, it is uh, doesn't violate those assumptions. So before I could conduct some ARIMA analysis, uh, time series analysis, um, I needed to make the Bitcoin's price stationary. So I performed a box Cox transformation and then did a first order difference. And then the augmented Dickey Fuller P value was much less than of alpha 0 0.05. So that proved that the, uh, well, the, you'd see that on the bottom graph there, it, that, that is the stationary series of Bitcoin's price since February. And then the top graph is just the box Cox transformed close price of Bitcoin. So after doing a grid search uh, from a seasonality uh, set to one ranging or ranging from one to 30 using PMD ARIMA libraries, auto ARIMA functionality, um, the, the result with the highest log likelihood ended up being the best model amongst those. Um, but this model was only constructed over the most recent years, Bitcoin data. So the uh, second model mentioned only contained uh, that data um, as well. So um, it's, it's, a, it's another way to compare them. Um, but the order was 410. Uh, the RMSE did improve. And yeah, so this is the next best model. Here's a quick plot of the residuals, as you can see below. And here's the model. It, it, it fits the actual, it, it aligns with the, the actual Bitcoin close price much better than the uh, previous model. However, when I used all of Bitcoin's data, ergo the uh, close price of Bitcoin uh, over the entire time frame of the, the data set, um, the model with the highest log likelihood and the lowest AIC um, ended up being the best model. Um, so only a first difference was made in the order, but also the seasonal order can, uh, was a 10 day per cycle uh, seasonality with uh, two auto regressive terms. So this ended up being the best model with the RMSE of approximately 538 and below is a plot of the residuals. And here's a, a plot of the model versus the actual Bitcoin close price. This is, you can tell that, you know, you can barely tell that the blue is over the black on this one. So this, this is definitely the best model to uh, use in predicting Bitcoin pricing for the next following day. So to validate the model, I just compared the predicted price of the best model versus the baseline models predicted price and the error was only 5.35% versus the error of the moving average model, which was 12.19%. Uh, so less than half of the amount of error of the baseline model was definitely quite an improvement. And this was, uh, the error was calculated by um, comparing those predicted prices to the actual price. So the financial indicators I talked about in the beginning, um, Basically, all that needs to all that needs to be done is uh, uh, well, the ones that I used were uh, volume weighted average price versus close, moving average convergence divergence versus signal line, and then relative strength index. So, adding those to the predicted price output from the best model, um, I was able to boost um, the information given um, to make a you know well informed trading decision. So all these indicators um, pretty much said to sell. And then um, unfortunately, the predicted price was slightly above the previous Bitcoin close price, that, that being on 11 January. So the predicted price would be on 12 January. Um, but the financial indicators did indicate to sell. And that was actually the best choice to make because um, the, the actual price did decrease. Um, but in summary, uh, the seasonal ARIMA model was the best model. Um, and its predicted price uh, only had an error of about 5.35%. And the results of the algorithm 
said to sell or wait to buy um, on 11 January for 12 January. And this did align with the fact that Bitcoin's price decreased, um, resulting in an overall loss of 4.6% approximately. So the, the next steps in this project will be to continue my, um, well, in the later stages of this project, I was attempting some LSTM modeling, um, but it didn't progress as uh, nicely as I wanted. So I will continue that because um, I'm hoping that uh, I can reduce the RMSE even more. Um, perhaps model other cryptocurrencies through this, a similar pipeline and construct a dynamic uh, cryptocurrency investment portfolio. And then perhaps include other factors into the model and perhaps some sentiment analysis factors as well. That's my presentation. <laughs>